I was walking out of my house and I had done like too much and I felt myself like start to die. Like I, like everything started like going black. Like, and, and I, 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 as I go to collapse, <laughs> I grabbed the front door knob and I was just like, okay, God, if you'll let me live and not, and not let me die in this moment, I promise I'll never touch this stuff again. And boom, just like that, everything stopped. I mean, no high, no, the heart stopped everything. And I was like, that's my, I'm not doing it, not touching it, I'm not doing this. And so I've been, that was 2008. Wow. And so I've been clean and clean since then. Welcome to the Elevate Everyday Podcast. We've got one of our clients back on the podcast and he's got a pretty amazing story. Um, and, and I appreciate him sharing it with you guys. I know, you, I know this is going to be very powerful for a lot of you guys to hear this. Um, but Bryce has come from, you know, a very low point and to where he's at now, you know, very successful. Um, so it's just amazing to see someone transform like that. So I want him to share that with you guys. He's also, um, someone who travels a lot for work. So I think you'll get a lot out of this. If you're someone that travels a lot, how to stay on track. And he's also a vegan, right? And he, and he makes great progress with us. So to dive into it, Bryce, I want to start, you know, where you started because i know that you, you even shared with us that you were homeless at one point kind of just you know can you tell us a little bit about kind of where you were at one point and, and how you kind of broke out of that like just give us that story yeah i i struggled really bad as a as a kid with depression anxiety and then when i got into like my teenage years it became more like suicidal ideations and then i ended up in a, a psych ward for a brief period of time when i was 15 um, and it just went downhill from there. I had a, a pretty rocky relationship with my parents and then they kicked me out of the house basically, uh, at like 19 and I had, I had my own apartment, had a job, all that stuff. And then it just, I just, I just was not in a good mental space and depression got worse and worse and worse. And I, I started getting more and more reckless, like completely, I mean, drugs, heavy, heavy drugs, heavy drinking, uh, prostitution, you name it. I mean, anything I could do to get in trouble, do something stupid. And I, I was constantly in and out of trouble with the law, constantly getting arrested. At one point I had, I think 37 warrants for my arrest. Wow. And when I finally went to, when I finally got arrested for all that, like the, the DA comes out and she's like, this is your, this is your, your, uh, your whatever rap sheet or whatever it was. And so it, and that, I think that was probably the, the biggest point of my life where I realized like all these decisions that I was making and all these things that I was doing was just not like I had, I had two choices to make. I could continue down this road um, or I could, I could change my life. And I was like, I, I don't want to do this anymore. I, I just, yep. I can't, I can't live like this. I can't, I mean, it was to the point where like, I would be hiding drugs like in my socks and stuff. And then like a cop would be behind me and I'd be panicking. Cause I'm like, if he pulls me over, I've got all these drugs on me and I'm going to go to, go to prison get a felony. Yeah. And I just started like thinking like, this is not like there, there has to be, you know, a better way. Mm -hmm. And I, I basically, um, I ended up in a place where I was in East Texas and I was living in this, what used to be a crack house. And it wasn't a crack house when I bought it, but it had just plywood floors. Literally it was like, I think I paid like $300 a month for it. And I was working at this store downtown in this small little town making like 200 bucks a week or something. And literally didn't have money for food because I had to pay rent. Um, I, didn't, I was lucky to eat every day. I didn't even own a pair of shoes. The lady that I worked for was like, she gave me like a coat to wear in the wintertime because she's like, I didn't have a coat. I didn't have shoes. I didn't have anything. I literally just walked every day to this store. And, and then I got a phone call from a friend of mine that I used to work with and she was like, Hey, I'm hiring for this accounting position. And I was like, well, I don't have a car. I don't have anything. And my dad was like, okay, well I'll like buy you like the cheapest car possible. You can just pay me back once you have a real job. And I was like, okay, fair enough. And at that point I was just like, now I'm back like in a position where I'm making money and I'm like, maybe I can be better. And it started to just, I just started to kind of realize like all you take with you is your integrity, right? Like you mm -hmm. take your values and you take, and people can, people can say what they want to say about you. They can talk whatever they want to talk about you. And this was in 2006 that, that this all happened. Um, I was still in a, a pretty destructive, abusive relationship. And, and I was in that for like nine years. And that also contributed to a lot of my downfall. And 
the person that I was with at the time was also also ended up getting addicted to methamphetamine. And I had really tapered off of it. I had given up cocaine, given up methamphetamine. And then when when I was in this relationship, then it was like, now I'm forced to be like, okay, they're doing meth. I have a choice. So I ended up doing it too. Uh, and then I got worse and worse and worse. And at one point, I was I was walking out of my house and I had done like too much and I felt myself like start to die. Like I, like everything started like going black. Like, and, and I, 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 as I go to collapse, <laughs> I grabbed the front door knob and I was just like, okay, God, if you'll let me live and not, and not let me die in this moment, I promise I'll never touch this stuff again. And boom, just like that, everything stopped. I mean, no high, no, the heart stopped everything. And I was like, that's my, I'm not doing it, not touching it, I'm not doing this. And so I've been, that was 2008. Wow. And so I've been clean and clean since then. Uh, I lost all of my upper teeth. I have no teeth in my upper. I've had more dental work. I, I probably could have paid cash for, for a pretty expensive car at this point with all the dental work I've had done over the past like 15 years, just because they were like, we can't save your upper teeth. It's, yeah. you know, so it was just, so yeah. So like from that point, I was like, you know what? Like I've made all these mistakes and now all I have is what's in the future. Right. Yeah. So I can, and I realize that like, it's your integrity that matters and it's who you are as a person that matters. Yeah. And so I just kept that going. I was like, you know what? I'm not this person that used to be on drugs and used to get in trouble with the law and was constantly tearing stuff up and doing stupid stuff. Like I'm going to like, I'm going to make a choice. And right. then I went to the doctor one day and she's like, your health is really bad. Like your liver is really bad, all this stuff. She's like, you're going to have to make drastic changes. And I was like, let's do it. So I did. And I changed and everything else. And then I kept on working and then I ended up, um, I, I, I did pretty good. And I, I ended up getting a better job working with the same owner, but he started a different company. And then four and a half years ago, I became vegan just as a, as a test. Um, the relationship I was in at the time, we, we were just going to like test it just to see it for like 30 days. And I was like, okay, I'll give it a shot for 30 days. I was still, I started training, um, I guess eight years ago. I just was like, you know what? Like I was overweight, I was struggling. And I was like, you know, I was probably, I think I was like 240, something mm -hmm. like that, 250. And I was like, man, I, I got to do something. Like, I, I can't, I can't, I was like 33, 34, I think maybe 35. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to like go to Planet Fitness. Maybe I'll just join this. So I did Planet Fitness and I would just walk every day. Like I just walked for 20 minutes. I was too scared to pick up a barbell, a dumbbell, anything. And I was like, I'm not. I would walk in, there was a treadmill right there in the front. That's where I'd walk for 20 minutes, leave. And I'd go late at night because I was so embarrassed of myself and how I looked. And I was afraid everybody was going to look at me. Now I realize no one cares. But so I, and then I was like, the, at the job I was at, there was a, somebody who, who he worked out a lot. And he was like, I used to be really overweight. He's like, if you want to train together. And I was like, I'm terrified. I was like, I don't know how to anything. And he's like, I'll show you some stuff. So then we started working out together. And then I just got to where I really enjoyed it. And then I left and went to Lifetime and moved back to Dallas. And and then it was just like, the more I kept doing it, the more I was like, I enjoy this. And then even being vegan, like, I mean, I know it's not for everyone and I don't tell people, you know, it's, but for me, I had always had an intolerance to dairy products as a child and it used to make me really, really sick. And as an adult, it was just making me really sick. Even though I didn't have the physical manifestation, I was still having all the inflammation inside. So I was like, I just really did it as a test to see if that was going to fix because the doctor's like, either you're going to have to take some sort of medicine to fix your liver or whatever. And I had already given up drinking. So it wasn't a drinking situation, but he was like, you're either going to have to make drastic changes to your health. And I was like, well, I don't know what else I can do. I was like, I'm exercising every day. I'm walking like three or four miles a day. Like, I don't know what else I can do. And he's like, you need to change your diet. And I'm like, yeah, I, I don't know what else I can change. He's like, well, and then I was watching some documentary and they were like, oh, give up dairy. And I was like, well, I used to always be allergic to milk. So I gave that up and that, and, and for me, it worked. Like it, it's, but it's, it's difficult. It's a difficult yeah. thing to, to sometimes maintain. It's a little easier now, but. Yeah. Well, there's a lot to unpack that. I kind of just wanted to let you <laughs> kind of tell your whole story there um, and just kind of let you go, go on with that. But um, man, that is an incredible story with, with where you got to man and, and the, at what you said about, you know, holding the doorknob. Um, and then just like, you know, everything kind of changed from there. It sounds like, you know, and it, 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 that was just a big wake up call for you. Um, and man, it's, it's crazy because 
you know, just having conversations with you, you know, even from our very first conversation, like if you weren't to tell anyone that, like, I don't think anyone would think you've been through all that. <laughs> like, like the person you are now, like no one would have ever guessed that you've been through all that and, and struggled early on with all that stuff. So that's super powerful, man. You've come such a long way. Just, just want to say like genuine, like it's amazing. Right. And, and, and it's, it's motivating. And for anyone that's like struggling at all, I mean, you know, Bryce has completely transformed his life and he's, you know, he's doing really well and, and you've transformed physically obviously as well. So dude, that, that's just amazing. Um, Herb, you got anything just to, before I kind of ask some questions on that, just about, about his story. Yeah. Just uh, Bryce. Holy shit, bro. You've got a lot of respect from me, my friend. That's, you know, and, and again, it's interesting because, you know, we've worked with people over the years and all walks of life. And then when you hear their people's stories, you're like, man, I thought I had it tough. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. I'm going to keep my mouth shut now, you know? Um, but I mean, to come through that and make the decisions you've made, um, kudos to you, my friend, because again, there's people that you are affecting right now. <clears throat> they're going to see this video and go, hmm, maybe I can do it too. Yeah. hundred yeah, percent. So yeah, so so yeah, thanks for sharing that first and foremost. Um, but to kind of pick up, you know, because it sounds like you you started getting into fitness, right? And you you fell in love with that. Um, like so you, you already started making some changes, you decided to become vegan before we even all started working with each other and working with you. Um, what were you doing before we started working with you? Kind of where were you at? Um, you know, what were the things you were doing? What were you still struggling with? Like where were you at kind of before we started? Definitely the diet thing. I, I've always, always had a struggle with food. I mean, okay. it, it's if I go to a gas station late at night, the first thing I'm going to want to get is three bags of different flavors of Doritos, some Reese's peanut butter cups, some Kit Kat bars, whatever. That's just where I'm going to naturally gravitate to. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't have probably the best understanding of diet when it came to working out because for the longest time, I was under the impression it didn't matter what you were eating as long as you were exercising because when i first started i didn't change my diet at all but just walking 20 minutes a day i dropped probably 20 pounds in six months mm -hmm. and so i kept that mentality thinking oh well all i need to do is exercise and then i can eat whatever i want and as time went on i realized that's not the case yeah. <laughs> as we well know that's so, called that's called your 20s <laughs> yeah that's called your 20s and then once you get into your 40s it's like your body says oh uh -huh, that's cute yeah but let me just show you what that what that two cookies you're going to eat is going to do to you yeah so yeah, yeah so, so i i definitely did that um so, so yeah you you were from 250 when you got into fitness where where were you at when we first got started remind me uh, mm -hmm. as far as weight goes i think you were definitely in the like the two tens somewhere in there, yeah. right? Two like tens, maybe, maybe close to two twenty, Um, and, and you're at what, like you're, you're under 200 now. Right. So yeah, yeah. between 195, 200. So, um, yeah. What, what things have kind of changed for you? Like what, what have maybe been some, some little unlocks or hacks that you've gotten through this program that have, that help you continue to, to make progress and kind of take it to the next level. I, I try to maintain a, a, a very high, amount of self-awareness, especially when it comes to like, if I'm in the gym and if, if I have a good lifting session, then I try to think about all the events that surround that. And that's something that they teach you like in counseling and stuff. When you, if you have like an anxiety attack or whatever, what's, what's, what are the events that are surrounding that? So every emotion, there's something that surrounds it. So if I'm in the gym and I have a good lifting session, then I think about, okay, what did I do before what have I done in the past 24 hours that might have helped contribute to this? Did I get adequate sleep? What did I eat today? What did I eat last night? You know, what what kinds of things were, were I was I thinking? Was I feeling? Was I dealing with? You know, whatever the case may be. If I had a bad session, then I'm like, okay, what what are the things on there as well that I can take away from? Yeah. And so I, I kind of try to always think about, and even like when it comes to food, like I'll I'll be like, okay, if I get that Reese's peanut butter cup. How am I going to feel after the fact mm -hmm. and what's it going to do to my body and, and what is it? Gonna, and it, it's probably more of a drastic mentality to have because it kind of teeters on the, the having a, a, a messed up relationship with food, I think. But for me, I have to be consciously aware of it. So I, I look at it and then I, I am in the habit of looking at the ingredient label on every single thing that I eat, just because it's number one, it gives me this feeling of, of 
I guess, power that I'm like, okay, reading the ingredients, what's in here? Are there seed oils? Is there GMOs? Is there, you know, whatever the case, how much sugar is in it? How much carbs, how much fat, you know, all this kind of stuff. So looking at those things and then saying, okay, you're about to eat this. What do you think this is going to do? And how is this going to make you feel? And if I do succumb to it, which I have, you know, I'll eat a Reese's peanut butter cup or something. Then I'm like, okay, now how do you feel after the fact? Mm -hmm. Do you feel as though this changed anything? Do you feel like this, did this make you feel better? No, it didn't. It didn't make you feel any better. So let's remember this feeling and let's remember this moment so that the next time that I'm, you know, in a hotel at 10 o'clock at night and I'm just pulling in and I'm tired and I've been driving for four hours and there's a little shop there and the lobby and they have all the candies and, and cakes and whatever else. And I'm like, and you want to, I want to grab that. Let's, I can think about it beforehand and say, is this really the best decision that you can make? Right. And then I log everything. I mean, I track everything on my fitness bill as best I can. I mean, if I, yeah. if I'm at dinner with an account or something, then I can't, you know, I can't always track it, but I do try to pay very close attention to what it is so that I have the awareness of it. Yeah. And I think that's the problem with a lot of our, our American food supply is that we've been taught to like not pay attention to that stuff. We have all the flashy labels and things like, Oh, low fat, low sugar, keto, this, that. But if you really start drilling down into it and saying, okay, if I log it in, in the phone, what it, what are the actual calorie counts and what's the actual macros on this? And, mm -hmm. and I can, I know if when I stick to my diet plan, I feel way better and I'm, yeah. I can train harder. I recover faster than if I just, you know, eat something that I shouldn't be eating. Right. Yeah. I think a few, a couple of big things that stand out to me from what you said is just being much more mindful about the holistic approach and how it makes you feel throughout the process. Right. And I think when you do have a coach, right. And you're paying attention, you know, cause we, we even pay attention on your weekly check-ins to like, where's your stress at because of certain factors with work and stuff like that. You know, you know, how was the diet? We kind of go through all that stuff. So we make sure that you're mindful throughout the process of everything that's going on and everything that's going into, if you had a good session, bad session, good week, bad week, um, all that stuff, the sleep. So yeah, I think not enough people, they just think they, they make it too simplified, like you said, or they, they just, you know, they're not mindful about everything that goes into it. Um, and, and when you are mindful and you, you, you have a holistic approach, you're paying attention to everything. It's just a, it's a completely different ball game. So mm -hmm. 100%. Yeah. Herb, you got any, you got anything on that, Herb? No, I, 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 what I do appreciate Bryce is you're, you're letting people know they have to be self-aware. Um, a, a lot of things we do, like you said, we just do cause it's a reflex, you know, you get done doing something. You're like, Hey dude, why did you just do that? It's like, what? Well, it's what I always do. <laughs> it's like, doesn't mean it was the right thing to do. Yep. Right. And again, people just think I'm going to make a decision to get in shape and go to the gym. Okay. Now what? Good luck making that a habit, bro. Right. Because now you're fighting with yourself, your internal, you know, and like you said, and then we, we've been talking the last couple of weeks about uh, breaking bad habits, setting good habits. And I'm hearing you go through all the uh, all the steps. Right. Find out what the trigger is, what made me want that, that, you know, and everybody got a reward from it. You got a reward from a bad habit. It's just is that reward serving me in the long run? I'm trying to lose weight that really tasted good. That's going to crush my goals. Mm -hmm. Right. So you have sometimes I tell people you got to cheat till you're totally pissed. And now you just throw it on the ground and you're mad. Now you're past decision. You're just pissed. Yes. You know, and I'm like, sometimes you got to get that. Not everybody has the ability to go, okay, willpower. You've got to explode, right? And like you say, grab that doorknob and have the baby Jesus on your shoulder going, make a decision, bro. I'm good either way. Yep. You know, because yep. like you're right, Bryce, if you want to do this, great. If you don't, great. I got my own problems. You got your own problems. The people watching you have their own problems, right? So again, I think it's it's smart and it's very uh, good of you to point these out to people that, hey, you're going to have a coach. You got someone that's helping you, but you got to make the decision to do it, right? It's there for everybody. That's what I don't get, Bryce. And Kate and I were talking about this and I'm sure you're the same way. I go to this gym behind me. That's the hardest thing to do is getting there. Now I'm going to do a half-ass workout. Yes. I, I, I really, honestly, bro, I don't even get that. I'm yeah. just like, why bother, you know? Right. Okay. Yeah. So we, we appreciate you, Bryce. You're, you're yes. definitely leading by example. Bryce is like always tracking his workouts, tracking his nutrition. Like he is dialed in and the progress speaks for himself itself. Right. It's like, you know, you're making, you're going up consistently on your lifts. We've got you doing Olympic lifts now. Like you're trying new things, right. Diving into new experiences. So 
the sky's the limit when you when you actually track and you <laughs> you stay accountable and you do the things yeah. you're supposed to do. So yeah, um, and you know what's nice, Bryce, is clients like you keep Cade and I on our toes. <laughs> I can't I can't have a conversation with you being half tired and go, oh, it's just Bryce. We'll we'll hook up. <laughs> I'd be like, shit, that's some bitch gonna ask me some stuff. <laughs> yeah. Where's my where's my Google? <laughs> yeah, exactly. We've got to be a little bit more perked up. Yeah, like because you. <laughs> this because you're you want what we're offering. And again, like I tell people, I've got 40 years of experience. Kate's got half a do- you know, a dozen years of experience. Take it from us. Right. Ask us questions. Cause once I give you the information, Bryce, whose information is it now? It's yes. Yours. Yes. Right. So yeah, I, I get great attitude and attitude wins the game. I don't care what your talent is. I've been with so many guys fighting and conditioning and they open their mouth and you just know you're never going to make it. Yep. Your skill set is great, but your, your mindset. So what am I a spiritual advice? Your skill set gets you in the game. Your mindset tells you how far you're going to go. Yes. And a lot of people are just going to sit on the bench and watch. And that's what, you know, I like when I was in, when I was in elementary school, I hated PE and I was always the very last person in my class to finish anything. And I, whether it was to walk a mile, whether it was to do jumping jacks, whatever, I was always the very last one. And I would always ask my mom to give me some excuse to get out of PE because I hated it. And now it's like, I love it, you know, and it's, yeah. and, and a lot of it comes from the fact that people, so many people in my life growing up were like, you're never going to mount anything. You're never going to be anything. You're always going to be a failure. You're always going to be a disappointment. And I was like, okay. And so I'm like, all right, that's fine. Yeah. Say you what, you what I, what I find amazing Bryce is that most people in your shoes use that as a victim mindset and they adopt that identity the rest of their life. And they never break out of that. Um, so my fault. what's I that? Do- it's not my fault. It's your fault, Cade. You yes. treated me like this. <laughs> yes. No, but I wanted to ask Bryce, like, like how or what's your advice to people that maybe have that identity? Like they were that kid in PE their whole life, right? People always said that to them, like you're, you know, that's just who you are. Like, how, how does someone break out of that? Do you just have to hit rock bottom like you did, and then just like say, like, I'm not going to accept this anymore? What do you think it is that could help someone get out of that mindset? I think you have to celebrate, you have to celebrate every small win for yourself. And you have to realize that number one, no one is coming to save you. No (laughs) one is going to encourage you the way that you're going to encourage yourself. And if you can walk, like every time I walk into the gym and I pick up a barbell or a dumbbell, I always look in the mirror and I'm like, I get to do this. Nobody's forcing me to do this. I get to do this. And there are people who don't get to do this. And there's people who will never get to do this because of their own choices. And yep. if you celebrate those wins and whether it's your, you know, if you fail on the set, okay, you know what? At least you did it. You showed up, you did it. You tried, you put in the effort and you know what? You can always try again tomorrow. Yep. But it's like, you know, people say, oh, well, you know, I'm like, I, I didn't subscribe to the victim Olympics. Like that's not my game. Like I want to go to the CrossFit games. I want to be that person who keeps pushing themselves farther and farther and farther. Yep. And it's nice whenever I put on a shirt that I hadn't put on in a year, like, like the other, like yesterday I put on a, on, on a hoodie and I was like, it's tight in my chest and it's tight in my shoulders. And I, cause I hadn't put it on in eight, nine months. Right. Yeah. And I was like, this is kind of a cool feeling, you know? Yeah. And so you have to just, you have to find your why to like, why do you want to do it? Because mm-hmm. if you don't have a reason for why you want to do it, then you're, you're never going to be able to create that motivation. So you have to say like, I want to do this. Like I watched this video one time, this, it was some old man and he was like basically lifting a kettlebell over and over. And at the end, he was like picking up his grandkid. Mm. And he was like, that's the whole reason why he trained was just to be able to be 80 years old, be able to pick up his grandkids and carry him around. So find your why, like you you can enjoy your life. Your, your, your body is an amazing machine and it adapts very quickly to both good and bad. So if you adapt it to the good things and you say, you know what, I'm going to do this. I, I structure my entire life around the gym. Yeah. And I realized that I'm fortunate. I don't have kids. I don't have anything like that. So I'm lucky in that regard, but you have to make it work where you can make it work. And there's days when it's like, I've got to do it at nine o'clock at night, or I've got to do it at seven in the morning, whatever the case yeah. may be, but yeah. find your why and find your reason and, and just do it, you know, yeah. just be, be purposeful and be mindful of, of what you're doing, that every single thing that you're doing is helping you 
you're, it's an investment in yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, every every muscle that you that you stretch and break and and rebuild or whatever that's going to help you long term when you're 70, 80 years mm-hmm. old and you're trying to get out of a chair. You know, yeah. I watch my dad now, and he's seventy five and and just he can't even get out of his out of his chair, and it's sad, you know. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't want to be like that. I, I want to be able to be lifting and running and jumping and all that stuff when I'm yeah. when I'm super powerful, man. Yeah, because we. We live in this fast food mentality, right? It's like everyone wants instant gratification all the time. But if you can shift out of that, and like you said, like just think about how is this setting me up for the future and be delaying the gratification so that you can have a more comfortable life long term. Like it's just such a powerful shift in frame of mind that just sets you up for for a happier and healthier life. So, um, so I appreciate you sharing that. Um, I wanted to make sure that you talked on this because you're definitely one of our clients that travels quite a bit <laughs> for your work. Um, so what what is your advice to people that travel a lot um, for work and or vacation? Like what's, what's your advice to stay on track um, when you're traveling? So be purposeful in what you're going to do. So like when I'm, I, I'm on the road, I think six months out of the year. So like I'm going to leave next week. I'm going to leave on Monday. I'm going to come back on Friday. So I'm already pre-planning where I'm going to be, what I'm going to do. I always make sure that I have a hotel room that has a full refrigerator just so that I can take my cooler and put all my food and stuff in there, but be purposeful about it. And also think about what you're going to be doing that day. If you're traveling for work, are you going to be tired at the end of the day? How are you going to get your workouts done? You know, what are you going to, so let think about your food and like make something that you're going to enjoy eating that obviously fits the macros. Like I pretty much stick to the same food every day. So it's not that big of a deal to me, but I enjoy it. So find stuff that you enjoy eating that fits your macros that can be microwaved and taste fine after you re-microwave it and just keep yourself focused and be like, this is what I'm going to eat Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And as you're making that food and as you're making that meal, just be like, these are my meals for the week. And you tell yourself that, and it sounds kind of cheesy and whatever, but I tell myself that I'm like, here's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, whatever case may be. And I'm like, this is what I'm going to eat. And I just put it into my mind so that when I do get to the hotel, when I am tired or whatever, I'm like, I already put in this effort. And I told myself, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to eat these meals, even though I'm like, oh, there might be a really amazing restaurant of some sort that's in this town that I've gone to. I'm like, oh, it looks so good. But I'm like, no, I committed to myself that this is what I'm going to eat and I'm going to eat it and I'm going to be, and I'm going to be happy with it and I'm going to be good and it's going to taste good. And it, and then after you eat it and you're like, you know what? I saved some money. Like I feel good. I'm staying on track. And then you can close that day out by saying, you know what? I, I managed to stay on track. I still yep. did it. I still, I still kept with it. Yeah. And I mean, I travel with a portable skillet at some time, but I try to just make stuff that I can just, you know, and, and the good thing about it too, is like, if you season it well, then when you do go to microwave it in a couple of days, it's going to absorb all the seasoning and flavor and stuff. So it all, all, sometimes it almost even tastes better than when you nice. first made it. Mm-hmm. So try to find all the positives in those things. Like, okay, this is going to be good. Like it smells good. It tastes good. I'm going to enjoy this. And this is what I'm going to eat. And yeah. now I know I stayed on track. I can go to bed, wake up the next day. And yeah. Do it. Yeah. I think the big thing there, because I, I just, I hear people say like, I travel for work. I can't stay on track. Right. And and we've got clients like you doing it, making it happen. Right. And, it, and I think the big thing is just people don't take that little tiny, it, like, it's not that much, like you just explained, like, it's just that little bit of extra time to plan and prep ahead of time. All right. It's just that little bit of planning. Um, and people just, they just use it as an excuse. Like I travel, I can't stay on track. So I just want to make sure that you, you talked on that because you're making it happen, man. And you're, you're, and you're always making it happen workout wise. I think, you know, that's, that's, like a hundred percent dialed in on your end. It's like, no matter what is going on, like you're traveling across the the country, like you, you still get that workout in every single time. So good on you for that. Um, but yeah, man. So want to kind of start wrapping this up here, but what, what are your goals? Cause you've come a long way, obviously. I mean, you're, you know, everyone's listening to this, I'm sure is already inspired with, with what you came from where you're at now what's next for you? Like, what do you, what do you want to accomplish in 2025? Like, what are your fitness goals? Where do you, where do you see yourself? I mean, I definitely want to be able to, you know, being in my forties, you know, as a, as a dude, obviously the, the stomach, the, the spare tire thing is always the last to go. So I would like to see that firmly, you know, actually finally go away completely. Um, you know, honestly, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying 
learning new stuff. I'm enjoying, you know, doing the Olympic lifts. Sorry, the dog is, and I, I'm enjoying just like getting stronger and seeing my body change. And it's nice when you look in the mirror and you're like, that's, you know, I look like that. Like, you know, where people are like, wow, you know, your, your, your legs look really good. And I'm like, oh, thanks. You know, and, and here, you know, so it's, you know, I would like to continue the Olympic lifts. Like I really enjoy that stuff. Uh, certainly, you know, I want to increase my bench press, my squat, my deadlift, yeah. you know, in 2025, but really just keep on doing this and keep on seeing my body change and grow. And the more that I have excitement about that, the easier it is to stay on track. Cause it's easy yeah. to get distract, discouraged and right. it's easy. To, like, I don't see any change. I don't see any change. And I struggle with that too. I'm like, I'm not changing and my body's not, you know, I'm still this or that. The scale says this, the scale says that, you know, take the measurements, do the stuff, stick with it and give yourself some flexibility and, you know, have your cheat meal once a week and enjoy yeah. your life. Yeah. Enjoy, enjoy being at the gym. Like, don't look at it. Like it's, just another responsibility that you got to do like you get to do that you get yeah. to go in and yeah that's to... that's super powerful yeah and I, I always tell people like if you're too outcome driven you're you're gonna you're gonna burn out right yeah. you've got to enjoy the process and, yeah. and i love what you're saying where you've got you have to have that frame of mind i get to go to the gym because I, I literally saw a guy at the gym today was missing a leg and he's still there getting it done he's rolling in on a wheelchair doing what he can with his upper body it's like you know, you look at stuff like that and you're like, what's your excuse? Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah. appreciate you saying that, man. Uh, and also, but yeah, I was just going to say about the traveling thing. A lot of hotels have microwaves in the lobby. So if like you're in a place where you're like in between hotel rooms or whatever, I take a small cooler and I take the big cooler so that depending on where I'm at, cause sometimes I'm in one hotel room, next hotel room, next hotel room, next hotel room, or different city, different city, different city. So I keep two small cooler with just like my day stuff. And then a lot of times you can go to, uh, I go to a lot of Homewood suites and a lot of them have the microwaves in the, the lobby. So you, I literally just walk in, I, t I have paper plates, plastic forks. I walk in, microwave my food, eat there in the lobby, and then just walk right back out. So if you find a hotel that you can just like microwave your food, if you're like in between hotels, yeah. then it's a little bit easier because now you're not like, oh, I got to make a detour here or go there or whatever. You're just, you're able to just eat your food and go on about your business. Nice. Yeah. Another little hack there. Yeah. And, it, and you're, you're one of my only clients that actually uses the skillet thing. I think that's a, that's a game changer. I don't know why more people don't do that with like the electric skillet. That's huge. So, and it was um, like 30 bucks on Amazon. It's nonstick. Yeah. It's, it works. It works great. Nice. So it's just, yeah. Cool. Herb, you got anything else for Bryce? Any other questions for him? No, again, very knowledgeable, very successful. Um, obviously you've had many crossroads where you decided to make a decision and you went with it. And I, I think a lot of people that I've come across, you can kind of see them coming. You know, I joined the gym two weeks ago and they're going to be martyrs. They're doing it just to be a martyr. I tried. Coach, I did my best. I just couldn't do it, but I tried. It's like everybody else is still doing it. <laughs> you know, I'm still doing it after 40 years. What do you mean? So I just think a lot of people have that, like Kate said, victim mentality or, or even worse, martyr. Right. Oh, I man, her, I was a rock star, man. I had the gloves, that belt just didn't work for me. I tried, just didn't work. It's like, oh, that's too bad. Sorry about that, you know? So no, Bryce, you're doing it, man. You know, and the one thing you said, I want to get on a t-shirt, Kate, I swear to God, you got to get this on a t-shirt. Um, no one is coming to save you. <laughs> you know, it, I've heard that in the military, my guys, everything. they just look at you, they kind of tilt their head and they're like, Herb, ain't nobody coming to save you, bro. And it's like, fuck, pick your pack up and let's go because no one's coming to save you, right? Um, and I think, like you said, the biggest thing you get out of it, all these you know, these not, not just in shape, but the gratification of, I said, I was going to do this. I didn't think I could do it. And I did it and I'm still doing it. Shit. This is pretty cool. Right. Cause I don't think a lot of people know what that feeling feels like, Bryce. Yeah. You know, yeah. they, they do something and it works. That's great. If you have to do something and it doesn't work, they quit. And I'm like, well, I got to try it a different way. What do you mean? <laughs> it's like, try it a different way, you know? So I appreciate you being on our team. Cause you make us much better, much I better coaches, it. much better, uh, and again, this is all about being a human being too, beyond, but beyond coaching and clients and all that stuff. So awesome job, my friend. Yeah, so we appreciate you, brother. So guys, um, I know that was inspirational for you. I hope you resonate with some of that stuff. Um, let us know if you got any questions and uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. In the meantime, elevate every damn day. Thanks, Bryce. Thank you. Peace.
elevate. Only obligation is to tell it straight.